Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. Today, I am super excited to have on Emily Katie. We're going to bring her on in just a moment. But first, a few announcements. If you have not had the opportunity to grab my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic guides, make sure you do so on my website, mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. For those of you that are in the healing industry and want to enhance your abilities and add on a very special modality, I'm teaching my Galactic Ascension Channel Certification Program online February 23rd or 22nd and 23rd. And I am leading a five-day galactic retreat here on the Big Island of, of Hawaii from April 30th to May 4th of next year. Um, limited spots, but a deep dive connection to really enhance your connection with your galactics. And then any time in the year, if you're coming to Hawaii, specifically to the Big Island, Kona side, then come on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using the Generation 3 military night vision goggles. So information about that is at Big Island UFO tours. All the other stuff is at mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. Without further ado, we're going to bring on Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Lisa. It's so great to be here. No, it's great to have you. And we're we're twinsing today. I love it. <laughs> so let me, I feel like we're old friends now because I feel like I've seen you so much recently. So very <laughs> happy to it. have you here. Um, let me read your bio and then we'll get into the conversation. Okay. So Emily. Emily Cady, a spiritual medium and intuitive channeler, endured immense pressure to overachieve, overachieve, leading to burnout. In 2015, a near-death experience awakened her to life's value, spurring her to live authentically, free from external expectations. Her journey inspires others to embrace their true selves for genuine fulfillment. Wow. So before we get to the NDE, I would love for you to share with the audience kind of how you grew up, spiritual, religious, something else, so that we can understand this journey that you've been on. Absolutely. So as a young child, I was very connected to the spiritual realm. I could see and hear spirits all the time. They were always around me. I was that little kid that I had the imaginary friends, but they weren't imaginary. They were really with me. Um, I also, I, I would, my house was a big like C shape and my parents' room was on the other end of the house. And where I was at, I had often spirits come in in the middle of the night and um, wake me up and scare me. Sometimes I just, I, I was very uncomfortable in my room. So in the middle of the night, I would find myself running, making this long run throughout the entire house to get to my parents' room. And I'd rather sleep on the floor in their room to be away from the spirits that were constantly like waking me up in the middle of the night. So I have always been a very spiritual being. My upbringing, we did not go to church. We never went to church. My parents were like never against it. They allowed us to go and experience it if we wanted to, but it was not something that um, th that they brought us up in. So, and we weren't spiritual people either. Okay. I had my own connection to spirit, the spirit realm, but um, yeah, it was just a family that didn't have really any judgment on either end of it, either in the spectrum. Now I was intrigued by going to church and I wanted to learn more. I was, I don't know, I was really drawn to learn more. So I actually did go to church on my own quite a bit. Okay. And um, did you go with friends or? I would go with my neighbors. Um, they would take me to their church and I would, I was just, I don't know what it was about church that intrigued me. Um, I wanted to learn more, but I, I mean, I don't know if you want me to go into my experience there. Um, yeah. If you want to share that. Yeah. I, I was intrigued. I was intrigued by Jesus. Um, and so I wanted to learn more. However, what I was finding was there was great judgment. Mm. because I wasn't from a Christian family. And so I remember being told I was going to go to hell because I, you know, wasn't from a family that was a believers. And if I didn't believe I would be going. So that, that unfortunately, it really, I remember thinking, Jesus isn't about this. Jesus, as a young kid thinking Jesus is about love and forgiveness and helping those that are in like dire straits. 
Yeah. And I think I had a connection with Jesus that I was not even aware of to know that that was his truth. Mm -hmm. And so I had, um, yeah, I, at that point was like, the religion's not for me, but I do love Jesus. Okay. And I will say I do do light language and I started doing light language in my twenties. And I used to always in my light language would say Ishua, Ishua, Ishua. And I never understood what that meant until later in life, knowing, oh, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> so there definitely is a soul connection there. Yeah, definitely. Well, did it, so did your parents know that you were having these interactions with the spirits? You know, that's a really good question. I, I do know that they, I, I told them there's, you know, spirits in my room or I don't know if they fully understood it or embraced it. Okay. They knew me as a highly sensitive child. One yeah. that, and so again, this is in the seventies. Yeah. It's not like today. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it wasn't, um, I don't think they could really fully understand what I was trying to share with them. Okay. And then, so as far as your um, experience with, as a kid, like, were you seeing them? Were you clairvoyant? Were you just feeling mm -hmm. them? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. All of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Seeing them, feeling them, hearing them. At one mm -hmm. point, there was actually three occasions that I would have multiple spirits talking to me at once. And um, I couldn't, I, re I remember feeling overwhelmed and like, guys, you got to stop. You're making me really uncomfortable right now. And I that happened three different times. And on the third time I said, stop, don't talk to me again. And they went silent. Okay. And well, they so did, did you shut down the Claire's then? I did. Yes. At that point, because there were too many, I was too open and there were too many of them trying to talk to me at once. Okay. And so I shut it down and, and that was probably, I can't, I, my guess is seven, eight, maybe cool. 10. I have no clue, to be honest with you, the age, but it wasn't into my teenage years. But I do know at 19, I started to open it up again. Okay. But they went silent. They respected me and went silent. So what what happened at age 19 that you decided to open it up again? Um, I was... Well, so can I go back? There's something that keeps showing up in my mind that I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be telling you this. Okay. As, as a young kid, where I grew up in Northern California, we had this back pasture with a hill. Um, and we had, I don't know why I feel like I need to tell you this. Um, we had a few different UFO sightings okay. there. And so I, that, I think that's part of my upbringing too, is um, these sightings that were there, mm -hmm. a few of them over the hill and some of them like hovering right above our home and stuff. So I don't know why, but I think, you know, actually I kind of know why. Um, my mom was very connected to light beings. And so okay. she, I, she was pulling them forward. So that, I guess that would be part of my upbringing. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's an important part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me so um now when you were seeing these craft were you feeling connected with them oh yeah a hundred percent it's like time froze and there's like just this connection in that moment that I, I couldn't i can't put words to it but just feeling like there's this connection there's no fear mm -hmm. i don't know if i would put love I wouldn't necessarily label love, but I just know that there was this connection that there was, it felt good. Okay. Excellent. Well, I, yeah, I want people to hear that because <laughs> there, there is so much fear around when people have sightings. So. Yeah, yeah, I know there was none at all. It was truly amazing. Okay. Well, so let's, I guess then move back to age 19. 19. Okay, at this time, I'm going to UC Santa Cruz. Um, if anybody knows anything about Santa Cruz, it's definitely that area is very metaphysical. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to school. And at school, um, I was not a natural student. I had learning disabilities as a kid. But I felt like I needed to go to school to prove my worth. And mm -hmm. so I went to Santa Cruz. And while I was at Santa Cruz, I started to take massage classes on the side. I was really drawn to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I fell in love with massage school. And so I started going to massage school on top of going to university, which is a lot. <laughs> um, but that's where my heart was, was going into massage school. 
And being in massage school, that just totally opened me back up to my my spiritual gifts at that time. Well, so then what kind of, after university and massage school, did you become a massage therapist or what was I did. I became a full-time massage therapist. I worked on professional athletes. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a spiritual massage that I did. I did more deep tissue, um, but they were having spiritual experiences on my table. <laughs> Um, so they think all of, of one that stands out in your mind. Oh, yeah. One of them in particular, well, I had a lot of professional skateboarders and those were trippy to work on their bodies. Um, what was happening with their, their bodies was amazing. But one in particular was a woman and, um, she had broken her back when she was pregnant. Um, and she couldn't, so this is, she had already had the baby and she wasn't paralyzed. She was able to walk. But in that moment, she broke her back. It was on one of the San Francisco trolleys and um, the trolley slammed on the brakes and it, it um, she fell on somebody's briefcase. Okay. And in that moment, I think a spirit got into her. Mm. Like there's this crack in her, like the thinning of the veil, but just this moment where there's trauma that a spirit came into her. And so I was working on her on the table. And as I was working on her, I was clearing any energy that didn't belong to her. And yeah. I kid you not, Lisa, she's sound asleep on my table. And she just sits up with her eyes like wide open and is like, like possessed. And I just told that spirit to go away. I'm like, you don't belong here. You don't, be this is not your home. Go to the light. And then she fell back on the table and fell back asleep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was a, a trippy experience, but that was one of the, you know, is really powerful because it was something that needed to be done for her and for that spirit too. Yeah. Well, and of course, no coincidence is that you were the one working on her. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. There's never a coincidence when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, are any interesting things before that, before we get to your NDE? Um, I, I mean, I guess all I could think of is I could always kind of like spirit would tell me things about people. I'd be with people and I could foresee what was what was about to happen in their near future. Okay. I could see things, um, good things, not negative things, things mm -hmm. that they would want to hear. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, just interacting with spirits. I think the biggest thing was, is at that time I was going to university and massage school, my energy was really low. So my vibration was low. I was trying to prove my worth to other people by going to un university and I was trying to follow my passion in massage school. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't living my truth and I was living somebody else's, my vibration was so low that um, I was having some some interaction with spirits that weren't necessarily wonderful, um, mm -hmm. that I would, you know, I did not necessarily need to go into, but I could physically see them and they would be pushing me over and doing things. And so I had to kind of... Um, figure that out. And I didn't really understand how to, I didn't have the right mentors to help me understand how to work with the spiritual realm uh, okay. and how to protect myself. Yeah. Well, and I think you brought up a couple of really good points is that when we are in those lower vibrational states, that is when other energies like that match us. A hundred percent. And that's why it's so important now, like to be consciously aware of where your energy state is so that if you are having some experiences like that, well, learning to raise your vibration and knowing that you can tell them go away like you did, right? Very powerful. Yeah, I learned that as as an as a um, in my childhood to, to go away, and then as an, in my early adulthood, I did as well. Yes, and they yeah. have to respect us, but we have to have that power. We can't have fear. If we have fear, they'll keep at it. Yeah, beautiful. So. Okay, so then now take me a little bit further on, along. Yeah. <laughs> so now this is uh, 2015. I'm in my mid to late 30s, and I am actually I'm in my early 40s <laughs> um, at this point. Um, time goes by way too fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I am married to a man 
that I wanted out of the relationship for seven years. I'd been with him for 12 at this point and I wanted out. Um, I had two very successful businesses, but they weren't aligned with who I was. Mm -hmm. On the outside, I looked like I had the perfect life. On the inside, I was dead. There was nothing inside of me. I had given up my massage and I went down the road of, you know, corporate America. I went down the road of living to everybody else's expectations. You know, I, I always say like the brochure said we're supposed to have go to college, get a job, have 2.5 kids and a white picket fence. That's what the brochure said. And I was trying to create that life to fulfill what I was supposedly supposed to have. Yeah. And it was never happening. I mean, the, things were going down that road, but it wasn't happening. So I had my businesses, um, I had a husband that I needed to leave and I was exhausted. I was burnt out. I was exhausted. I had nothing to give. Um, and one day I had to go to the doctor's office for a minor procedure. And as I'm at the doctor's office, she injects um, lidocaine in me. And as she injected lidocaine into me, all of a sudden I felt like all oozy and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to start to like faint. I feel awful. I just feel awful. I start to see black with like the red speckles. Um, and I remember thinking, I need to tell her I have I have to get some help. I need help because I'm I, I'm gonna faint. Nothing would come out of my mouth. And I'm like, I gotta put that my head between my legs so I can get blood back to my head. Couldn't move. Okay. I'm just in this miserable state. My body feels so awful. And then out of nowhere, I'm out of my body and I'm in this like complete euphoric state. I have no pain in my body. I am just like free. I'm floating up into this black space with a white light at the end of it. The typical NDE story, it happened to me with a silhouette standing in front of the light. And I am just so grateful to be there. I'm so grateful to be out of my body. Like instantly, I am like, whew, relief. Mm -hmm. and I'm expansive. Like there's no limitations. I am just like limitless floating up. And I think it's super fascinating because if you think down here in the 3D realm on earth, if you're walking down a dark alley with a light at the end of it and a silhouette in front of it, you're not going to go walking down yeah. that alley. <laughs> no, I'm like floating, just going, I am like so excited to connect with this person or this being, whoever this is. I, mm -hmm. I feel pure love and I am going and I have no fear. So I'm floating. I don't even realize I'm transitioning. I'm just floating and I'm in, in Nirvana. And as I'm going up, then I realize, oh, wait, I'm transitioning. And I go, oh, my mom, my dad, and my beloved dog are going to be devastated when they find out. It's just going to destroy them. And I, this is where I understood what an empath was. Being an empath is somebody that can feel everyone's emotions. It's like amplified. I think we can all feel everyone's emotions, but it's amplified. It and, is. and so I, as my entire life, lived up to everybody else's expectations because I knew if I disappointed them, I knew what it would feel like. I was gonna feel their pain. So I chose to live for everybody else but myself. And here I'm now thinking, oh, wait, if I transition, they're going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, Lisa, I was detached. My emotions were not merged with theirs. I knew they would hurt, mm -hmm. but I wasn't feeling it. Okay. It was like the first time in my life I felt whole. And I was like, oh, I don't have to take on their feelings. This is amazing. And then I was shown three timelines and they look like little thermometers with the mer liquid mercury in them. Okay. And it showed how long each of them would be in crippling grief. And I knew that it was just for a, a tiny portion of their life. I knew that they would be able to smile again. I knew that they would be able to enjoy their life. It was not going to completely devastate them for the rest of their life. And I was like, awesome. I can transition now. I'm going. I also had the realization in that moment that me holding on to their emotions and their expectations and carrying that weight all of these years mm -hmm. was not only disempowering me, but it was them too. 
the importance of people going through their own emotions. They yeah. need to go through those emotions. They do. Yes. And if I never understood that, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't hurt people. And so this realization came to me and I, I was so empowered in that moment, realizing, okay, this is great. They have to go through that. That's part of their life lesson. And, and me carrying it for them is not helping them. It's mm -hmm. stumping them and it's stumping me. So at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm done. I'm done living. Life was hard. And I was like, I'm, I'm ready. So I was just floating up to this being. And as I'm floating, all of a sudden I see this um, spirit come at me out of nowhere. So I'm in black space and the spirit comes rushing at me and um, pushes me back into my body. Okay. So physically I'm pushed back into my physical body and I wake up in my physical body and I have no clue who I am. I have complete amnesia. I don't know who I am. I don't understand like the confines of the exam room. Like it's in the spirit realm, it's limitless. There's nothing holding you back. Mm. It's so expansive. And then in this 3D realm, everything is confining and limiting. So I'm stuck in this room and I have this doctor yelling at me and she's yelling, Emily. And I'm like, one, who's Emily? And two, who are you? I don't, I don't even understand the concept of a doctor at this moment. I don't know who I, I'm just confused and scared, really scared. Um, what had happened to me is I had a grand mal seizure from the lidocaine. Okay. And I completely stopped breathing. She had to do, perform CPR on me to bring me back into my body. And so wow. she's the one that brought me back. <laughs> I think a spirit actually did push me back in. I think it wasn't my time to go in. Well, but, here, so no, it was not your time. Yeah, exactly. So if it was my choice, it was my time. Yeah. Um, so, but I find it super fascinating. I came back. I finally was trying to orient with myself and okay. I, I'm, I think I'm Emily. Okay. I, I, I think she's here to help me. I, it took some time to really get back into kind of who I was. I'm never, I've never been the same person though. Yeah. From that moment on, I changed. I within six months left my husband. I closed my two businesses um, and just kind of what tried to figure out my purpose. My brain worked a lot slower. It was not the same, like, go, 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 go. I've always been this like overachiever, high performing, a type personality. All of a sudden I was like, slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is fun. So, um, trying to navigate that and things changed. My taste in music changed. My friends changed. Uh, taste in food changed. I just, everything changed. And so I basically went into hibernation for a good year, but the, I, I do want to touch on this. And, um, I went back to what I knew. So I closed my businesses, but I still had to make money. So I yeah. got a job doing what I did and that destroyed me. It absolutely destroyed me because that wasn't my path. Mm -hmm. And I had to understand and be willing to walk away from what I knew, my ego. And that's really scary. It is. I, when you I, try to support yourself? <laughs> yeah. I'm in my fourth career. So, um, yep. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting for sure. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a lot to learn and a lot to accept and a lot of trust with my guides to help me navigate things and in and, and in changing the careers and going, okay, I'm supposed to be on the spiritual one. Show me. And all they would show me, Lisa, was me jumping off a cliff and them catching me. That's it. Jump. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But they've always taken care of me. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. Well, so after after the near death experience, then how long was it before you really got onto that path? Where it you took are a now? few years. It really took a few years. Um, I was not happy. I was um, when you have a spiritual awakening and you're not really in your body and ready, it can backfire on you, mm. and it backfired on me. Um, so I went into a Great Depression, 
And again, I was trying to, like, I've always forced things as a kid at the learning disability. I forced things. I forced going on to college. I forced, forced, forced. And so I was still trying to force and my, my awakened soul was like, no, you can't. And doors kept shutting on me. Um, so I hired a spiritual mentor to work with me. And the number one thing I said was, I know I'm highly spiritual, but you have to treat me as if I'm not because I don't know what I'm doing here. And I want to make sure whatever I do is completely safe and sacred for myself and anyone I interact with. Because again, in my twenties, I had interacted with some prankster spirits and I was like, I don't want that. Yeah. So, um, it took me years. It took me probably five years to really understand like, okay, this is my, my journey and accept it and learn how to get out of my brain my ego, put my ego in the back and allow my soul go into my heart and allow my heart to guide me. Yeah. I understand that completely. <laughs> so then once you fully accepted who and what you are here to do, then what did that lead to? Like sh share what you do with your clients, yeah. how you work with them and what, and why people come to you. Um, I really want to touch on t stepping out of the spiritual closet. Cause I know you get it too. Yeah. It's really hard <laughs> to, so somebody that has been groomed her whole life, you know, you getting a PhD, me, you know, performing on a yeah. level that wasn't me, um, and thinking I'm supposed to be corporate and then going, Oh no, that's not the direction I'm supposed to be doing. And sharing this with the, I still sometimes like on my personal Facebook, I'm like, I really don't want this out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it takes a lot to put out there what you do. And I, and it's, but I will say I was grateful. I had great support from my family to be able to accept who I am. So that made a huge difference. Um, so what I do now is I work with um, empaths. And I help them turn their sensitivities into their superpowers. I work with, I help on um, regulating their nervous system. First of all, empaths, our nervous systems are super sensitive. And a lot of them are out of whack because of just taking on so many different energies that aren't ours. And if it's accumulated over years and years and you don't even realize you're doing it, it's yeah. like, okay, let's get this nervous system back into order and aligned with who you are. Um, I work through the chakras. I work through clearing um, ancestral trauma, generational trauma, past life trauma, um, and then empowering them to understand what their gifts are and how powerful their gifts are um, so that they can truly step into their, their authentic living and be able to protect themselves. So, you know, spiritual hygiene is like for me, the first thing I start my day with and in my day with, I make sure I'm spiritually cleansed and that nothing is attached, attached to me that doesn't belong to me. And, um, I, I work with my clients to help them understand that importance. Yeah. That, I mean, one of the things that I didn't realize throughout my life was like you, I was taking on everyone's emotions and I was thinking that they were mine. Yeah. Right. And so I'm like, why am I feeling like this? And so it, it wasn't until, you know, many years later, or I don't know, maybe even just what's it like seven years ago, that's when I learned how to cleanse myself and actually really fully discover like, oh, that, that wasn't me at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a lot of years of, of that and that whole nervous system regulation. Um, I know that that caused me so much illness throughout my life. Oh, right? 100%. Yeah. I, and even if like, if, your system, your nervous system is not regulated and maybe you're healthy. It doesn't mean that in the future, if you don't get control over it, it could cause some serious issues down the yeah. road. So, um, yeah, empaths, we take on, we're, I mean, again, I think everybody has the ability to feel other people's energy and their emotions, but empaths, it's strong and it's you empath. don't know the difference. You cannot yeah. tell the difference. Yeah. Well, one of the things I'm curious, do you, are you familiar with human design at all? I am. Yeah. I'm not um, like well-trained in it. I know yeah. the basics, let's just say. 
Okay. Well, so I am curious if you know, for you, is your emotional energy center, is it defined or undefined? Oh, you know what? I don't know. I have my chart somewhere around here. I can get it for you. I know I'm a manifesting generator. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so like, but I don't know. Do you know if you're sacral or emotional inner authority? Can't answer it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know that. I Human design is something I've been wanting to study. Right now, I'm in the middle of the mystical Kabbalah and spending the last eight, nine months on that. And so, um, and I know human design, a portion of the mystical Kabbalah is brought into it. So I'm I'm like in that. And I think the next thing I'm ready to study once I get through the mystical Kabbalah will be human design. Okay. So yeah, I've studied human design for years. And why, why I'm curious about that is because, so I'm a sacral generator, which means that my emotional center is not defined. And we are the ones, when that is true, that is when we absorb other people's emotions. And Interesting. Are, and it does amplify. So I I'm, I've, have a feeling you are a sacral manifesting generator. I mean, so. I can pull my chart up right now if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> we stop the recording and we'll, we'll talk more, but, um, but that's one thing for anyone that really, if you do know your human design chart and your emotional center is undefined, you are an empath. Like you feel it. Yeah. 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 I'm uh, probably, but I, I can't answer it. So we'll yeah. have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what else is, so, Okay. So in your thing, you say you're an intuitive channeler. So mm -hmm. what are you what are you channeling? Um, I really love to work with the divine mothers. Um, so I, one of my main guides is Jesus's grandmother Anna, mm -hmm. um, and I come to her with so much reverence. Um, she is so powerful. So, she, um, and she's taught me the graces and the graces not being a religious word. This is just the graces of life. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, anywhere from humility to compassion, um, it's just understanding how to really navigate our lives in this human experience in the most graceful way that we possibly can. The other day, you and I were talking about filters and having judgment because of filters of life experiences that have um, happened to all of us, right? Yeah. Every single one of us has had an experience that has caused trauma and it creates this filter and then this judgment comes through. So I've been working with Anna for years and um, she's been helping me understand how to navigate those filters through grace and giving me a different perspective of like why I'm triggered in a certain way so I can heal those painful moments and those, you know, childhood wounds or past life wounds, whatever they may be. Um, and yeah, just see it as a gift rather than something that could tick you off or make you angry. Um, yeah. So Anna is uh, one of my main guides. I work with um, a lot of guides. So I, I have a huge spirit family. All I, they're all here right now. Um, one of them that's stepping forward is uh, Notre Dame is stepping forward. Um, Archangel Michael is here. Um, I have some light beans here as well with me right now. So they're all here. Um, and they're all within the divine realm. Mm -hmm. And the messages that they, that they channel are, I, they, I channel for them. It's usually, um, the goal here is what they're saying is if we can give you, you being, the collective or anyone I'm reading for some clarity of what your next few steps are meant to be. That's going to bring you some more um, peace within your body and your mind to take those steps with confidence and knowing that you're in the, on the right path. So it's a, yeah, it's a, they're, they're confirming it's to help regulate the nervous system as we all <laughs> navigate this uncertain world that we're, working yeah. you're living in <laughs> right well and right now in the collective there's just so much fear and uncertainty and yeah, yeah. there so, is a lot so we're going through such a transition right now things are shifting and this is a purpose i mean we we chose to be here 
to go mm-hmm. through this shift that we're currently in. Um, but change is not something that we like. And, yeah. and, and none of us really understand, like the spirit realm keeps saying, like they keep, they're telling me right now, it's a beautiful thing. It's so beautiful. I'm like, you come here and live this. <laughs> Okay, show me where the beauty is. <laughs> and so, but the, like they're showing me butterflies right now. They're just showing me like the beauty and the simple things to focus on that is what they're saying. Don't look at the big picture. Don't look at the like all the chaos. Look at the small, simple things. And that's where you're going to see the beauty and more beauty is going to um, come from that. Yeah. And I love that because that's what my higher dimensional ETs share. They're like, okay, yeah stay out of that greater chaotic, you know, global stuff that's going on, even within the United States, stay out of it, really focus. They, they haven't, I like that, the microcosm kind of thing. I yeah. they share that they talk more about like focus on what you actually want in your life. And, and so that message is coming through now in just basically helping, um, anyone that's listening to regulate their nervous system Mm. because it's really hard to know. They're saying it's really hard to know what you want when you're, you are, you're so caught up in all these different energies. So to go down to such a simple level and just to get recentered there. I love that. Yeah, that was good. Thanks guys. Yeah. I love the spirit realm. (laughs) Well, so um, as a spiritual medium, when you're working with clients, do you what like do you bring in that channeling and give them messages or okay? Yeah, so um, I will work with my clients and um, sorry, when spirits here, it's hard for me to look at the camera, so I apologize. I, no um, but when I work with my clients, I curate their if I'm working with a client over like a few months of time, Mm -hmm. their mentorship is curated by their spirit team. Their spirit team is giving me downloads of what we are going to work with within that person. And each week it's different and nobody is the same. I don't have a blueprint because everyone is so different, but some people could be, we're going in the quantum and we're going to do some timeline shifts and some people it could just be as simple as let's work on your root chakra and get you really fully in your body and then once you're in your body then we can go into the quantum and play but if you're not in your body you're not ready yeah that's so true and i've had uh, several conversations about that over this last week with other podcast guests and and things that i and you know shows that i've been on and it, it like the more grounded that you are the further out, yes, you can go. You yeah. have to be here. But can you expand on that? I'm just curious, the further out, like spiritually like, or? Well, even into like the higher dimensional realm, the universal realm. Right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Going into higher. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Going into like the 12th dimension. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. So my guides are saying they're confirming all of that right now. Like, um, what they're also it's sharing with me is especially over the next two or three years, there's going to be some major transitions and shifts and the importance why you keep hearing this. This is what they're saying. Why you keep hearing the importance of going in the root chakra is, um, because the, all these shifts are coming. And if we're not grounded, we're not going to be able to handle it. Mm. That's what they're saying. This is not specifically for you. This is for everyone, but why the message keeps coming up is why. Yeah, You're, we're hearing it. Well, and what is even since we're talking about the root chakra. So of the Hawaiian islands, I'm on the big island, which is the root chakra of the islands. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. And <laughs> I love that. I was called to move here three and a half years ago. Oh, gosh, and, I'm sorry, spirit is hitting me hard right now. So, I, I just, they're, I'm okay. sorry, they're like really confirming everything you're saying. But I, yeah, so it was like, you know, I had a pretty good life in Olympia, Washington. Um, but then COVID hits and this call to move here. And so, and then I'm like, okay, root chakra, grounded. And yeah, really working with that transmutational energy that 
is here on this island. Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> yes, we need that. We as a collective need you to be doing that and helping each and every single one of us. Well, same likewise, sister. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, the light workers that are out there, like focusing on that and really helping yeah. people get into their root. Yeah. It's important right now. Yeah. Is there anything else in our last little bit of time that they want to share or that you want to share that's coming? Through? Let me ask them if they have anything else. Okay, so what they're showing me, I'm going to ask them for some confirmation. They just show this like spotlight shining down. Let me ask, what's the comfort? It's like shining down on earth. Okay, thank you. They're saying they're here for us. Just call on them and they are going to shine and light up your path. So don't, you have nothing to fear that everything will be lit up each step. You don't, they don't want you to look at the big picture. Stay small and know that each, if you call on them, and rely on them, each step will be lit for you and you'll know exactly what to take. And there is no missteps, they're saying. There's always lessons. Mm. We, we know that, but we don't necessarily like that right now. We want, we want yeah. actual steps. So <laughs> I'm telling them right now for the collective, we're tired of learning the hard way. Can you help us learn with grace and ease? Um, so that the, the, we don't, to really help us avoid those missteps. So they are confirming this. They're saying this right now, Lisa is, this is for the collective or anyone listening. Um, can you repeat that? I forgot. They're confirming to go back into your root chakra. If you don't want to take the missteps, you need to be totally in your body. Um, if your root chakra is clear and balanced and harmonized, all the other chakras will be in alignment of it, they're saying, and that you can, at that point, be aligned with where you're supposed to be going. Okay. So for those of you that don't understand what that means, then work with Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Did that not make any sense? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, it makes sense. But I'm just saying for, there might be listeners or viewers who are like, Okay, how do I do that? What is the Oh, root we're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. you know what? Okay, yeah, I don't have a meditation for the root chakra. I need to put one out. I do have a meditation um that is free if um your viewers want. I don't know. Um it's to help them go from the lower level um emotions and help them move up to higher level emotions. Well, I think that's very valuable. Yeah, yeah. it's just help them move along and um so they don't get stuck in those negative energies mm -hmm. and that, that that's going to help get them into their body. Yeah. Well, and so I, yeah, so definitely grab that freebie. Is it on your website? Um, I have a link to it or um, I can put it on my website too. Yeah. Okay. Well, cause you can always send me the link and I'll put it in the notes. Okay. Perfect. Yep. So, awesome. Yeah. So for those watching and listening, do that. And then um, the, first part of my free meditative journey that I always talk about has a balancing of the chakras and raising your oh. energy vibration as well. So I need to do that. You were talking about that the other day. I'm like, oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's use all of the tools, all the resources yes. that we all provide for free. I mean, just, and rinse and repeat. <laughs> Absolutely. Whatever works for you. It's really important just to plug in and rinse and repeat. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I do it daily. I absolutely do this sort of stuff daily. Yeah. So where can people find you, your website, what socials are you on? And you have a podcast as well. That we I recorded. do. That Dr. Lisa was on my podcast, which I'll be releasing. Um, shortly. But um, I, I'm my podcast is actually right now on YouTube. Um, it's Emily Katie Spiritual Medium. So you can find me there as well as my email or my website is emilykatie.com and Katie is with a D not a T. Okay. And then the socials, Facebook and uh, Facebook and Insta, both Emily Katie uh, Spiritual Medium. You can find me there. Okay. Any last words of wisdom that are coming to you? Yes, I do have some words of wisdom. Um, okay, how do I say that? Sometimes they, they, sh they say it, but I don't know how to articulate. So basically, they're saying you're perfect. You are, your soul has no fear, and you are totally perfect. So um, going, 
like trusting your heart, tr trusting your heart to guide you through these uncertain times. You are 100% perfect and you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Beautiful. What a great way to end. And so thank you so much for being here with me. I just, I love talking to you. I love talking to you, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. It's yeah. a real joy to be here. And for those watching or listening, thank you for being here. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha.